Let us pray. Oh, Lord, you gather us on this second Sunday of Advent to hear your word. May we deepen in faith, deepen in courage to all that you call us to be. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this was Pastor Jeff's scheduled weekend to preach. <laughs> Until Thursday evening when, as I mentioned earlier, he found out he needed surgery on Friday for his retinal tears. And also found out Thursday night, you won't be able to preach <laughs> on, on the weekend. And so uh, he called me and we talked. Can you preach? Well, of course I can. He's done it for me many times. He'd do it for me in a heartbeat, of course. And we continue to keep Pastor Jeff in our prayers. But then I said to him, well, did you have any notes? <laughs> 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 that I got to read Esther fast. <laughs> and he said, well, you know, because Esther is told in this kind of style, this sort of over-the-top, melodramatic, larger-than-life characters. I was going to start with a cartoon, about a minute and a half. And uh, some of you I know will know this cartoon. Here it is. to the northern region of Canada at the close of the 19th century rode Dudley Do-Right of the Mounties, lonely defender of justice and fair play, handsome, brave, daring, and hopelessly lost. These service station maps are impossible. Can't even fold up the thing. I think I should have turned left at that last tree. Meanwhile, a short distance away, Snidely Whiplash was up to his favorite pastime, tying women to railroad tracks. He soon had unexpected company. A Mountie! Correct! Pardon me, sir, but do you happen to know the way to the Royal Canadian Mountie Camp? Uh, why, yes, I do. Oh, this pesky knot. Could you give me a hand, or rather finger? <laughs> Always willing to help a citizen in need? There! <laughs> Dudley do ride to the Mounties. Get out of that if you can! Oh, fudge! Meanwhile, Nell Fenwick, the beautiful daughter of Inspector Fenwick, was out gathering chestnuts. Suddenly, she stumbled onto the biggest nut of all, Dudley Do-Right. What Dudley Do-Right are you doing with that other woman? I thought you always did right. I was doing right, Nell. That's how I got in this predicament. But could I tell you about it later? I think there is a train approaching. Well, Dudley Do-Right. <laughs> Uh, who's doing everything right, and of course, a dastardly evil, snidely whiplash. Kind of those over-the-top characters. The good are really, really good. The bad are really, really bad. And that is, the, 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 that melodramatic style is kind of, it, it is the genre of how Esther, the book of Esther is written with sort of this buffoon king who is so inept and can't make any decisions and um, there's the evil uh, Haman, and when Haman comes on the scene, it's kind of meant to boo and hiss. And when Mordecai and Esther, who are Jewish, come on the scene, it's meant to kind of cheer, sort of in that style. And it's that that leads us into, though, some really serious, important topics that in this story, there is a huge threat to the Jewish people. Now, this is the time they're in the diaspora in Persia. And uh, some have settled there. The Cyrus has said some Jews can go back. But some have settled in Persia. And so the Jewish people in Persia Empire are a religious minority. And the uh, king has been convinced to have this edict, a threat to kill all Jews. And in the face of all of this, we see how Esther steps up with courage. And we hear this very haunting line from Mordecai to Esther in our God story today. Perhaps you have come to this time of history for just such a time as this. This is our Main still today. Perhaps you were born for such a time as this. Those are Mordecai 
words to Queen Esther. She has m been a commoner Jew, but has moved into royalty. And if we want to look at courage, if we want to look at taking risk in the face of threat, it's Queen Esther. As I mentioned, this, this uh, kind of buffoon king has been convinced to write this edict, really for genocide, for the extermination of all Jewish people in Susa, the capital of, winter capital of, of Persia. And Mordecai goes to Queen Esther to plead with her to, to go to the king to speak on behalf of her people to the king. And at first she hesitates because she knows that the law says that to go unsummoned to the king means death. So she has to risk her life. And she hesitates, knowing it could mean her life. And Mordecai says, do you think by keeping silent you're going to escape death. Who knows? Perhaps you have come to just this time. Just this time in royalty for just such a time as this. And then Esther steps up. She goes to the king, and if you read all ten chapters of Esther, you'll find she saves her people. The Jewish people are not put to death in this particular case. She has courageous leadership for just such a time as this. Those are words for our discipleship today. Discipleship involves courage. Discipleship always carries with it a degree of risk for the sake of the gospel. Esther stood in, in for her people and spoke up on their behalf, even risking her own life. She says, well, if I perish, I perish. How do we speak truth to power? How are we being called right here, right now, to speak words of life? Where have you had to step up? with courage. Many years ago, <coughs> here in Sartell, we had a family, a Somali family, move into, into Sartell. And this is a number of years ago. And it was a mother, a father, and several children. And it, uh, an incident happened where the father was actually in the car, just parked in front of their apartment, and somebody came by and smashed the windshield, smashed the uh, outside mirror, and made some derogatory comments. Their children were playing in the playground, and some hurtful derogatory comments were made as well. And because of our involvement with Grip Isaiah at the time, I was asked to go and meet with this Somali family. Never had met him before but meet with them and learn more about what happened and be a, a voice of support, a word of help. Another person and I went, and we went to their apartment and, and met with them, learned more. Of course, the police had been called, and the police were following up on it very well. This family was very happy with how seriously the police took it and following up. But there was something I had to go uh, uh, and, and, and go to City Hall on their behalf. And I can't even remember what it was exactly. But I needed to inquire about something or check into something on their behalf at City Hall. And I said I would. And so I stopped at City Hall and I explained the incident and what I was there for. And the person said to me, why are you getting involved? It wasn't mean, or it was an honest question, but it kind of, you know, took me back. I had to think, well, 
And I sort of stammered out, well, hmm, I'm, a, I'm a pastor here. I live in this community. I, I guess I don't want to see people treated like this. And she accepted that, and we went on and did our business. But there was that sense of needing to step out of my comfort zone a bit and speak up on behalf of another. When we speak up for another, there is risk. And some may question, why are you getting involved? And you know, today I think I would answer differently. I think I would say, because the world needs more Esthers. <laughs> because our lives, our communities, our congregations <laughs> need more Esthers. And because it's our discipleship. It's our following Jesus the one who from our baptism calls us to be light and salt, to let your light so shine before others. Have you ever had an Esther who has spoken up for you? Or have you felt called to be an Esther for another for just such a time? as this, now. Esther of the Bible is long gone. But today God is calling us to that kind of discipleship, a risk-taking Esther discipleship, stepping up to speak, stepping into hard places of fear and hatred to speak a word of life. Esther had to speak truth to power. We're called to speak truth to power, even when that power means us. Where's God calling you? Perhaps you've been seeing children and youth. Perhaps you've been seeing someone on the playground or at school being excluded because of the color of their skin or laughed at or ridiculed. What could you do? What could you say? I'm just always so humbled by our fact ministry, feeding area children together, and hearing the story of how that began with a second grade boy coming home from school and, and, and asking his mom, Mom, if somebody is taking food out of the garbage, is it stealing? And the mom said, What? What are you talking about? And he went on to explain, and, and that she ended up a discussion about hunger and food insecurity, poverty right here. And that little boy said to his mom, Mom, what are we going to do about it? Second grade. And it's blossomed into this beautiful ministry, Feeding Area Children Together. I've witnessed so many Esthers in our congregation, in you, who speak up for the vulnerable. And we speak also through our actions. Last Wednesday night, we started our Advent Conspiracy, our theme for our Advent Wednesday services, an intentional time to step back and take a breather and just refocus on what is the season all about, not getting so dragged along or pulled along in consumerism or, or the busyness. And we talked about our mission focus being um, as a congregation to raise $2,500 for a well that one out of nine people in the world today do not have access to clean water, something we take for granted. And so we want to raise one well. It's $2,500. After the service, somebody came up and handed a note, Pastor Jeff, and it said, if we raise $2,500 for one, I'm putting in another $2,500 for a second well. Aha! Uh -huh. Courageous act on behalf of others. My family and I visited the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. several years ago. Maybe some of you have been there. It opened in 1993 on the Holocaust. And there's a quote by Martin right at the beginning. 
uh, by Martin Niemöller. Martin Niemöller was a Lutheran German pastor at the time of, of the rise of Hitler and Nazi Germany, an outspoken critic of Hitler and ended up spending many years in a concentration camp. Wasn't Jewish, but a critic. And he wrote these words, and they're at the beginning of the Holocaust Museum, and it's these. Here's a picture of people looking at those words. I'll read them by, by Niemöller. First, they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Powerful words. Why are we getting involved? Why are you getting involved? Today I would answer, because we need more Esthers. People to speak up and speak out when others are treated poorly or unfairly or unjustly, and it's called discipleship. A discipleship that's about courage, that takes risks for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ who was put on a cross because he hung around the marginalized and the hurting, put to death and raised to new life that today we worship a risen Lord and Savior who continually calls us up to discipleship, taking risks to speak up. And that's our faith question. This week, we want to send you home with a faith question. Where is God calling us to step into hard places to speak a word of life? And if you don't remember that whole line, that's okay. Just remember one word today, courage. Where is God calling us for courage? Talk about it. Pray about it. Reflect on it. It's for just such a time as this. Let us pray. Lord God, as we reflect today on this God story and on your calling us from our baptismal waters to walk in your ways, Help us by your spirit to speak up and out where you call us with discernment and wisdom for others, for the world that you so love. In Jesus' name, amen. Our